back. Gentleman yields back. The chair now recognizes the gentlelady from uh, New York, Ms. Clark, for five minutes. Let me thank you, Chairman Johnson and Ranking Member Tonko, for holding this hearing today. I also want to thank our witnesses as well for being here to testify on the important rule which would update the long overdue NACS standard. It has been over a decade since this standard was strengthened. Since then, study after study has shown how fine particulate matter is much more harmful in the short term as well as over time than we had previously underscored or understood. Over 100 million Americans live in, in counties with unhealthy air pollution, and over 18 million people live in counties that receive failing grades for year-round particulate pollution. I agree with the point Ranking Member Pallone made earlier. The cost of not under, un, understating, uh, updating this uh, standard in lives, in lost work days, in public health spending is unacceptable. I know many of my Republican colleagues like to speak about the cost this rule places on polluters, but we must recognize the cost of inaction. The EPA estimated that through updating this standard, the public health benefits of fewer hospitalizations, lives lost, could total as much as $43 billion over the next decade. So my first question uh, is for Ms. Cooper. Ms. Cooper, I want to emphasize a point you made in your testimony. Black Americans, 65 and older, experienced three times as many deaths attributed to exposure to this type of pollution compared to all other races. So when we consider the hundreds of thousands of deaths per year from poor air quality, we must recognize who is harmed the most by government's failure to act. Ms. Cooper, what would failing to update these standards mean for older black Americans and communities of color? Congresswoman Clark, uh, failing to update the standards would mean that there would be more black Americans, black and brown Americans, people in low wealth communities who would suffer the harms of particulate matter pollution and also, unfortunately, death. Thank you. Ms. Cooper, what other groups are disproportionately harmed by particulate matter pollution and how does this standard take vulnerable populations exposure into account? Congressman Clark, children are affected, pregnant women, unborn children, are also affected, and again, there's research that shows the correlation between particulate pollution and these vulnerable classes of individuals. Let me thank you for, the, for your response. It is incomprehensible to me that Republicans point to increased wildfire smoke, which is driven by climate change, but throw up their hands whenever we want to uh, work together on concrete policies to reduce emissions and combat climate change. Almost every hearing this committee has held this year has been an attempt to gut the bedrock environmental laws and open up our lands to fossil fuel exploitation. Just last week, we voted on a bill that would reverse decades of progress made on cleaning up pollution from our transportation sector. Well, I remain committed to ensuring my constituents have clean air to breathe and clean water to drink while also centering equity and protecting the most vulnerable among us. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. 